Hey guys, my name's Essinger, and today we're going to be learning how to get a vocoder sound like this. Caught in the gleam of the city lights, sunsets and riverside. So that second clip is actually from a song that's not out yet at the time I'm making this video, but it's from my album After Dark, which comes out in December, so feel free to subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss it. So first we're going to be taking a look at my song Afterburner, and the vocals alone sound like this. Caught in the gleam of the city lights Sunsets and riversides I've been trying to forget the way you cut my eye And here's the vocoder by itself Caught in the gleam of the city lights Sunsets and riversides So it's kind of got a crispy sort of metallic tone to it and I'll show you guys how to get that so first we're gonna open up Serum, and really any synth works for this. It's just a simple saw stack. I've got some unison for widening and just a little bit of detune, and that sound should be something like this. So now with the carrier out of the way, we can move on to the vocoder section. So this chain, I started off with a de-esser just to remove any harsh transients, followed by just a little bit of compression, a bit of EQ to round off the vocal, and now we can move on to the vocoder. So for the carrier, we're going to want to go external, and that's going to be whatever synth we're using, in our case Serum, and that'll be the sound we use through our modulator. So I like to add in a little bit of unvoiced, which adds some clarity to the transients, and I set that at about 50, and then 50% for sensitivity. So I've taken out some of the bands in the lower frequencies that might clash with the vocal, and for the depth, I like to keep it around the middle, anywhere between 100 and 115, but you can adjust it to whatever you think sounds right. I don't usually mess with the format a lot. Sometimes I'll set it just a little bit lower for a certain effect, but we're gonna leave it at zero for this. I typically have my attack set pretty low, if not zero. For the release, I would say anywhere between 50 and 80 for this effect. Now, depending on if you want to mix in the original vocal signal, I'm gonna leave the wetness all the way up because I like to process the clean vocal just a little bit differently. And that way you can add more effects to the vocal that you might not want in the vocoder. I like to set my bands anywhere between 20 and 40. It just depends on the effect I'm going for, but we'll leave it at 40 since we're going for something more crispy. I'm going to go ahead and high pass the range just a little so it doesn't conflict with the original vocals. And I'll set that around 300 for this one. We don't really need to mess with the high range. So the setting that really gives the sound its characteristic is the bandwidth. And you can bring that up and down and welcome Apple News. We're going to set this to retro. So now as we change the bandwidth, we're going to hear a lot more of a metallic sort of sound. And I think for the song I set it around 80. So I did throw an OTT on there after that, just to bring out some of the frequencies. Um, have a little bit of compression after that, and an EQ on there just to keep it from clashing with the low mids from the original vocal. Topped off with a little bit of all hollow room, and you should get something like this. And, I've been to the and then I like to mix in the original vocal. Sunsets and riversides. I've been trying to forget the way you cut my eye. Like a flame that's never gonna die. And you can always adjust that to taste. So let's move on to the second vocal. But only after dark. I got this one by creating a synth melody that I wanted the vocal to follow. So, we've got in Serum literally just a simple saw wave, no more to it than that. So by itself it sounds like this. Like shit. But the melody that I used is actually a different one than the original vocal. The original melody goes like this. But only after dark. So I went in and changed that to a new melody. You want to make sure that the MIDI notes in your synth line line up with the words in the waveform, and we want them to overlap by just a little bit so we don't cut off any parts. So moving on to the vocoder section, I have a lot more of the unvoiced sound in there, which adds a lot of clarity to the consonants or transients. And uh, obviously we're going to go external from the syrup track we just made. And I'm going to go with 36 bands for this one. Uh, we can keep the range the same. Uh, we're going to stay on retro, and this one we're going to keep around the 40 range. So the default setting for Ableton's vocoder sounds about like this, not so great with this type of synth. But you'll hear what happens when we change it. Nice. Let's keep the depth at 100, and we can bring the format down for this one just to give it a little bit of a deeper sound. Keep the attack down, the release pretty low, and the dry wet all the way up. After that I have a high pass filter, a couple EQs, 
and CLA is one of my favorite vocal plugins. I do have quite a bit of compression on this. Uh, I have a de-esser to get rid of some of the high frequencies, a hollow room which I have automated, and a gate at the very end to get rid of some compressor noise. One thing I do sometimes is I'll take the original vocal and I'll cut out the transients, like the S's and T's, and I'll just place them in a new track by themselves. And they'll kind of do the same thing that the unvoiced filter is doing on the vocoder, but it makes it sound a little bit more human. By itself, you don't hear much. But mixed in with a vocoder, it does make quite a bit of a difference. I'll turn that down just a bit, and if you follow this right, you should get something like this. Thank you guys for watching the video. If it helps you at all, don't forget to leave a comment and a like, and feel free to subscribe so I can waste even more of your time. Love you.